It's important to say that the opinions shared in this episode are just that, and they're ours alone. I urge each and every one of you to do your own homework before making any decisions. I'm Andy Signor, and this is Hugging the Cactus. You you said we can go anywhere, and now this is a good time to sort of bring this up. There's an article that when I looked up, I was doing research of just sort of facts about Michael. This one pops up from Vanity Fair by Maureen Orth. Ten undeniable facts about the Michael Jackson's abuse allegations. Uh, what's frustrating about this list, and I want to go through the list because you're here, you know better than most uh, what's accurate, what's not. There's no real sources to say these are facts. There's a lot of stuff here that just is declaring fact, which I, I've actually tried to go find the, the evidence of this, and I found more fans, which I, I implore everyone, go see what the fans put together because they, they're like CSI teams. They go through and really point out where the inaccuracies and everything are. Um, and but they give you facts, too. Exactly. They, they find the facts you- about it. Um, <laughs> but there's some stuff here that, that I, I was reading, and sort of uh, one one thing I know is true that I, I, I've heard you say is the one thing Michael regrets is the settlements. He did do two yeah. settlements to two children. I, it's, we have to address that. Uh, yeah. He paid the money to do it. Why did he do that what why that that seems like that could be well why would if you didn't do it do it but what, what what's your take on that it's hard because you know the i think the one of the first things is that you got to remember that he became kind of the poster child of why you don't do settlements you know back then big companies did it all all the time whether mcdonald's for like a coffee burn you know like so someone burned their hand you know holding a too hot coffee or whatever that was the norm was just to pay them off get them out of the way My uncle did the opposite, actually, you know, when he was and I don't like to call him. I call him extortions because what happened was the the extortion started in 93 in August of 93 when it became public. My uncle fought that for six months. He didn't do the oh, well, let's keep it out of the news and whatever. Let's pay him off. No, he he fought them. And it was people like or people places like hard copy and current affair and all those things. They had a field day with it. And they ran with the story and they made it bigger than it was so that all of a sudden, six months later, it became something not like, oh, well, there's no way he would have done this to, oh my gosh, did he do this? And um, we can go through the, I, I don't know how much time we have, but I can go through the um, the kind of the settlement aspect of it of what he was up against and why he um i mean the settled. short version is he just didn't want to go through the process of it he was sort of it was told and instructed from what i've read that it, just, it, it seemed like but that yeah, would the be the easier sh- way the for it to go away basically he got railroaded in terms of like if he would have if he would have allowed the civil case to happen then basically the criminal case would have had a blueprint of how to beat michael jackson how to send him to jail which now it's illegal in, in, in L.A. or California to do that. You can't have the civil case go before the criminal case. But and that was the thing is like he it was it's called an, it was pretty much injustice in that way because you do have that blueprint. So um, I'll give you an example, real quick example in terms of like, let's say in the in this civil case, we find out that Michael wasn't even there in these dates. Well, guess what? In the criminal case, they can just change those dates or they can find another thing. And so that was the thing. My uncle was like, the criminal case is the most more important case. You know, that's the case that I can go away for life. It's the case I'm, you know, I have to fight my life for. The civil one is just about money. And if that's all they want, they can go away. But the interesting thing that the media never reports is that First of all, it wasn't for it was for negligence. It wasn't for sexual abuse that he, and it never stopped anyone, whether it's Jordy, whether it's parents from testifying in a criminal case. And so when they say hush money, there is no hush money because they could have still testified. The, the fact is, all they wanted was money. And once they had money, they were good. And the criminal case had no evidence besides hearsay. And so they had nothing to go off of. And as we said, which we'll get to in the thing, the descriptions didn't match, so they had no case. Well, that's that's the next one I want to get through because yeah. I, Michael had uh, vilod, vil, 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 what is, how you say, the skin... Vitiligo. Vitiligo, thank you. The skin discoloration disease. Uh, and Jordy drew a picture of the markings. I remember all about this. Uh, and yeah. they say that the, the drawings were then sealed in an envelope. A few months later, investigators photographed Jackson's genitalia. Uh, the photographs matched Chandler's drawings. Now, mm-hmm. I don't recall that happening. I mean, in my research, I, I, read, <laughs> I read interviews yeah. or saw interviews where bodyguards specifically said like, 
dude, there's no, if those match, they would have put him in cuffs right then and there at the police station. He would have been, that would have been probable, probable cause because right then it would have showed the kid had seen Michael's genitals and they matched. The fact that my uncle wasn't arrested tells you that they didn't match. Not to mention Jordy, which is the most, the biggest thing that they always admit, said that my uncle was circumcised, which we found out through the autopsy, he was not circumcised. He was, and so there's a lot of, you know, that's a big change and difference in that way. And so. It seems I, like you need honestly, to go after Maureen. What is this? This author of Ortho to, to, for def- defamation alone. This is not, these are not undeniable facts though. This is complete, terrible you journalism. You can't, you can't slander. It's, the thing is, is, and she knows this, the dead can't be slandered or libeled. So we can't sue her. We would, trust me, we would have sued her, but we can't sue her. And she knows that the laws need to be changed in that way. But we can't go after her, so she can print anything she wants. And she's been after him for a long time, correct? Yes. This she, author. She's the, she, if you look up her, her name in um, Vanity Fair, you will see an article about Michael Jackson um, performing voodoo or hiring a voodoo priest to put a hex or, um, on um, Geffen and Spielberg. And uh, something also about... And it's so cartoony that it's really ridiculous, but also something about murdering cows for sacred blood or something like that, that she also wrote about. This is in Vanity Fair. She wrote about Michael Jackson doing this. Right. This isn't so, like the New York Post. This is Vanity No, it's not like a gossip. It's not Inquirer. <laughs> it's not TMZ. Right. She posted this and it's still up there in Vanity Fair. You can look it up right now. And those are the things that right then and there, I would be like, okay, she's dismissed as uh, as she's someone that either has a clear vendetta against Michael or she just makes up crap about Michael. And so what was hurt hurting in, about this whole Vanity Fair article was that it got circulated so much. Celebrities were retweeting this. And I'm like, did you even read this? You're just tweeting it? I'm like, you know, and it, as you said, Andy, it was designed as facts, like the description matched, you know, no evidence of it, not saying where it came from, just her saying it, you know. And everyone will tell you the descriptions didn't match because they did. He'd be in jail. Right. No, super frustrating. So I, I get it because I want to, these are the types of things I feel like keep people from being able to talk. And about my Michael. uncle regretted the settlement. And I know you mentioned that and whatever, but I'll say this, you know, it was, that was the hardest thing for him because he got talked into doing it by people that he trusted that were like, Michael, it's only money. You know, your, um, your freedom and all that. But that was the, one of the reasons why, with the 2005 try, he was so determined to prove his innocence right. was because, and, and you saw what that did to him. And that's the thing too. It's like in a way that his friends were right because he deteriorated in 2005 through that trial. Maybe they knew that he wouldn't have survived that trial because in 2005, he literally was not surviving that trial. And so I do believe in their, in a way they had his best interest, but also he was on tour. So they wanted to keep the money rolling in that way. And if he, if he went to trial or if he fought it too much, then he would have to cancel his tour and cancel making albums and all that stuff. And he was a cash cow to them. So they had every incentive to, to convince him to settle. Well, I think you just, you just said it, the poster child, the fact that then he chose not to do that again the next time and won really speaks volumes. And it's frustrating that people just ignore that now based off of two people who perjured, well, one of them perjured, perjured themselves going through this list again, because I think it's important. Yeah. yeah, Because no one has shown that I I haven't found anywhere where anyone's actually said it's a fact that the photographs matched the drawings. Oh, trust me. That's a myth. That's a myth everywhere. everywhere, But that's a myth everywhere that no one has proved. So don't just believe that. Uh, The other one was that there's a alarm system that linked up to his bedroom as people were approaching. It made ding dong sounds. Can you elaborate on this? Yeah. I mean, everyone, the thing is everyone knew about the alarm system in that way, but I think the, there was something about it. I guess someone did a test in it and it's on YouTube or whatever in that, that the alarm system really didn't prevent anything from being hidden in that way. It wasn't fast enough in terms of like, you still could walk in on any time period. It wasn't like it gave you enough time to change or get, you know, or dress up or anything like that. The alarm system was for eavesdropping because my uncle had a serious problem First of all, he hated gossiping and he hated um, when he when people he called it snooping, you know, that was one of his pet peeves. And 
I can't tell you how many people that worked around him were, would secretly, and it was sometimes it was a little obvious, but they would secretly just hang out a little longer and listen to his conversations. And he really didn't like that a lot. And so he installed this and he, this is what he told us. So I can only go off of what he told us, which I understand was two things. One for the snooping, because he would catch people literally outside his door, listening to his conversations. And two, at which we know like he had problems with staff going to the tabloids, National Enquirer and selling stories, you know, ex staff members. So I understand that. And two, because back in Havenhurst days, people would hop the fence and be, you know, they, security would find them in his closet or, you know, in the house somewhere. So everything was always about privacy. And you got to remember as well with my uncle. My uncle had the one of the biggest, he had the biggest publishing catalog of all time. I would have probably installed something to protect me because my biggest fear would be if I'm sleeping, someone coming to kill me. Right. And to so, echo what Macaulay said, this wasn't even just a bedroom. This was like his like hangout fun. Like this was yes. bigger than just a bed. This was a room where people were hanging out, having fun, where he was and, and doing and meetings, the et word cetera. Bedroom, it should have just been his room because honestly, the word bedrooms makes it sound right sensual it was a it, i honestly called it michael's room because that literally what it was it was a hangout spot we my memories of it was always like three stooges and like fun things and and we just played around in there it wasn't like oh well, we need to go to sleep now like right the there's so many michael, assumptions too like who's who who assumes that the door was always closed like there's so many <laughs> things right that we just in our minds write the narrative to be more malicious because yeah. we're thinking exactly what we said oh it's his bedroom they must be slamming the door locking it three locks and there's an alarm yeah. system who no one's no one's ever said that it's so frustrating could you imagine and and here's the thing i can guarantee you that my uncle's you know if there were kids in the in that room his bedroom was not locked because that would have triggered the security, the staff to be like, that's something weird. His, you know, he keeps locking the door when his, when the kids are around, you know, that, it, I mean, the thing is, is that you got to remember he had hundreds of staff members in that way. And, and all the staff members besides the ones that went to national Enquirer back in the day and sold their store for hundreds of thousands of dollars that later went on stand said nothing happened you know, which they don't report on. Um, those staff members and those people, a lot of them knew the stories or knew the rumors in that way. They were very aware of it. And a lot of them would have been very cautious in a way, almost overly cautious, because now you have to question hundreds of people. Oh, you just turned a blind eye to this. And that's not the case whatsoever. I mean, we have one, we have one guy, um, I won't mention his name, but you can look him up. Um, who actually turned in a sexual predator uh, um, that he knew because of, um, and so he is not beyond, you know, turning a blind eye. He's done it before in terms of turning in someone. And he's an adamant defender of Michael. Uh, well, there's more on here. I, some of these I don't even want to get to. I mean, the, the 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 report that staff never saw women spending the night with Michael. I just how is that any of our business? I don't even. I just, and that's it's, not true at all. <laughs> and that's the thing. I mean, but that's but those, and it's like staff never saw. You know, so you didn't see you 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 know. It's like what Lisa Marie yeah. didn't exist. Right, she didn't have sex with Michael in front of you, staff members. How how weird of him. <laughs> <laughs> staff never. It's which staff. The, the thing is, is when you have to always question those kind of articles because, they'll, I mean, this one doesn't even say sources set close to the family, you know, which is the biggest lie, you know, when they say those things. It's like there's no sources. It's just basically um, bullet points. And these are what was it's the name of his undeniable facts. Yeah, undeniable facts. Another which being the that you know then they talk about how much Wade and the gifts people got that uh, James Safechuck and Wade got that doesn't just prove anything to me though I mean it just shows they that he gave he was generous to a lot of people We're he gonna gave get Ryan White a car right you know, he he gave me he he paid for my college education he had a lot of money <laughs> he had a lot of money that it's, it's like, like he could know, divvy like, those out like, right yeah it it bothers me because they want to pretend that they were special and like oh no he only gave it to no he. he he was so generous in that. I mean, a little too generous, but I, I benefit from it because I got a co you know college education, high school education. But you know, in the same sense, is like if he, if he cared about you, money wasn't the issue in that way. He wanted to see you happy. 
Yeah. So, and then the other one here, there's two more, but the, uh, just cause I, I don't want yeah. people to say you skipped that one. There, this one yeah, I had never even heard too. of. Uh, the, there was an extensive collection of adult erotic material in a suitcase next to the bed, including bondage photos and naked boys. Forensic experts said there were fingerprints on them from the boys and them. This was all new sculptures of bondage women with ball gags near the full view of the bed. Y- you were there. Is this, do you have any, anything you can dispute help to, to prove that this is BS? Um, a lot of it you could find on the internet and that's been debunked. I can tell you specifically about the, you know, erotic magazines and stuff like that. A lot of the playboys, hustlers, um, the, <laughs> there's so many <laughs> of them. I'm laughing because they were part of our personal collection, me and my brother's personal <laughs> collection. Um, and you'd bring them up to do- Michael. <laughs> yeah. We donated to him basically <laughs> because the thing is, is that he was Michael Jackson. He couldn't go out and buy these magazines, right? you know? in that way and he definitely can order them because then they would show up at neverland and then people would be in his business and stuff like that so right and there wasn't internet so every grown man is allowed to do what he does it's not right none of our business it's it's completely natural in that in that way and the thing is is that they tried to turn that as if you know what they said is that because they expect the opposite in that way and and because there were these magazines they tried to say oh well he's using it to groom these kids or the, he's using that to kind of um, arouse these kids. But the amount of magazines he had, and I'm not going to say how many he had, <laughs> but the amount of magazines he had, he only needed two or three to do that. You know, right. he didn't need, you know, the amount that he had in that, which shows that um, he was just like every other guy in that way when it comes to that scenario. And, and that's healthy. And that's the thing. And they, they don't want to push that narrative. So they'll say erotic. They'll even say, I've heard this. I've heard um, gay magazines, and but they don't tell you that it's female female, which is interesting. When they but say so none. Magazines. Just so we're clear, none of that was out and in, in about for kids to stumble upon. These were Heck no. Yeah, these Heck there was no, no ball the gag statues because I want to make sure you you did address no, that too. No, my uncle would be the first person to fire someone if that was the case. But like, he had these know. in some secret stash, like every man does. Oh well, the, the yeah, definitely the mag- <laughs> <laughs> magazines. I can I can attest to that and. And we were, you know, we were, uh, 2005, we were kind of part of the court system in that way. We were going to testify to that, me and my brothers. We weren't needed because Mesero was kicking so much butt. He kind of stopped it early. But we were on the witness list for that reason. So To dispute um, that fact. Got it. Well, yeah. It's it's weird because it's like uh, I've seen like Joe Rogan does his podcast and he was goes mm-hmm. off and he he's been pretty supportive of Michael. I, he doesn't really buy it all. He 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 takes facts too, but he his whole thing was that Michael was chemically castrated uh, and that he didn't have any sort of sexual desires or anything like that. And I, I look, I, I if you don't want to talk about it, I don't really want to talk about it. I hate that we have to talk about it, but it's like it's it's frustrating because I want to defend him and sort of put these rumors to bed so people can respect the the musician. The, yeah, yeah. And tra- you know, but is that is there any? Do you know if there was any truth to that? No, no, definitely not. Um, I can tell you that the, the the weird thing about my uncle was that my uncle, and I shouldn't say weird, it's just my uncle, He, you know, as men, we think about sex often. You know, that's the thing. <laughs> and for him, he was thinking about his craft and his musicianship and all that stuff. So it was it was secondary. It was it was it wasn't the main focus. And I think that's where people kind of don't understand because he wasn't out there, you know, sleeping with groupies and all that stuff that people are like, oh, he what he wasn't into sex and stuff like that. Or he wasn't into relationships, as you saw with certain people that have come out that have said, no, he was into relationship. He talked about women all the time in terms of liking them or thinking they were cute and stuff like that. He just was naturally shy as well in that aspect of it. So I know he was not. <laughs> and um, also, as you, because, as we said in the beginning, it's still childlike in a way I've just never really got to experience. I imagine dating and things like a normal person. And would. that's how you have to look through. The, if you look at it through those lens, you would understand the awkwardness and the kind of shyness of it because you're still figuring out that. But I also think, you know, we have to ask that when you say like chemically castrated, that would have showed up in the autopsy. You know, there's a lot of things that. And it didn't for the record. Huh? That didn't show up. No, that's what I'm saying. It would have showed up in the, that's what I'm saying. A lot of these lies, and I'm not saying he, you know, he created it or he just heard about it. It's all myths, right? The man is such a legend that now it's just like. Well, that's the thing. What the autopsy did say was that, you know, um, that he was, um, he had vitiligo that he was uncircumcised, everything to, it's almost like his autopsy defended him in a way and cut a lot of these BS rumors off and a lot of these myths off. 
Right. The vitiligo meaning like people were always saying, oh, no, he was dying of skin. No, that was proven. And like he really yeah. did have this disease that I think it was also. He I remember said, he kept, people he said, said they, it in Oprah's thing. Yeah. Well, people thought he was making it up. Like, oh, that's just yeah. that's non-existent. But yeah. Not me because I, I saw it firsthand. Right. And so for me, it was never. Um, I, I mean, the hard thing is, is when you're only fed what the media feeds you, of course, you're going to believe it because you only see headlines. But for me, when you actually know the person, you physically see the vitiligo on his hands and on his neck, you know, you understand it, you see it and you, and you question, how could they not think that? But then you're only given the cer certain information. So people believe what they're given. Well, and the last fact on the list to me is ironic because it's Martin Brashear's mentioned the documentary that he did about the little sleeping sleeping with the, mm. with the boys in the same bed. Uh, but when I went and did research, Martin Bashir has been quoted as believing Michael. Uh, the quote, yeah. uh, but the truth is that uh, he was never convicted of any crime. I never saw any wrongdoing myself. And whilst his lifestyle may have been a bit unorthodox, I don't believe it was criminal. And uh, I think the world has now lost the greatest entertainer it's probably ever known. So here, even this man who sort of stirred up all the controversy, which he tends to do in his interviews, that's sort of what mm -hmm. Brashear does. Even he came to the defense and said, I don't believe he was actually sleeping with yeah. children. Someone that's, as I said, someone that spent all that time with them. It's like, if you, the more time you spend with them, the more you realize he would not have done this. And this is someone that easily could have said that after the thing. But I think, honestly, his conscience got to him. You know, this was after Michael passed. And I think that's the thing is that you start realizing, wow, you know, what I said, you know, had consequences in that way or what or the documentary I did had consequences in that way. And so because um, a lot of people saw the Martin Brashear documentary, but you didn't see, you know, the, the footage that you weren't supposed to see, the special the special that my uncle did afterwards, which um, I think it was on Fox and which had the tape rolling as Martin did his documentary thing. And you can see the manipulation and how certain things were edited. It's very, it's actually really sad because he got a promotion. He actually got, um, I think it was an anchorship at ABC from that documentary, you know? So it's like we reward that kind of behavior in terms of shady um, um, journalism in that way. And Michael, I, it's important that we, as we do this, because as I said, you're doing a, you are doing a documentary to sort of, or, or a piece to sort of defend your yeah, uncle project, and talk yeah. about him, a project. Uh, feel free to tell us about it. But I, I know also, like, it's a big part of that documentary you had told me earlier, which I think is important we mentioned, is just the human hum, humanitarian work that he has done. As I was going yeah. through to sort of prep for this, we all know we are the world and everything. But my yeah. God, I think people forget the scope of give back that Michael gave to the world. Oh my gosh. Yeah, I think that, well, I think that's, a, thank you for mentioning that, because that's something that a lot of people don't know and don't, or don't care to remember in that way. I mean, he's in the Guinness Book of World Rec Records for his charitable giving. And he, you know, the narrative became when he passed, oh, he died, you know, X amount, I think it was like, I forgot how much it was in debt, you know, million, 100 million, 200 million, or whatever it was in debt. But what they don't tell you in that same sentence is that, over his lifetime, he gave over $300 million to charity because then it doesn't sound like this guy was bad with his money. It sounds like this guy was generous with his money. And that's a thing. So even in his death, the media painted it as this guy owed all this money in debt, not to mention that he had a billion dollar catalog he was still owned, but they always want to make it sound like he was broke, desperate and broke. And, and even with the drugs and stuff like that, oh, he was a druggie. Well, Funny how the autopsy didn't say that he was addicted to half the stuff that they said he was addicted to. And that he just died strictly from the thing that the doctor gave him. Which I don't is, like call, calling him a doctor, but yeah. Yeah, no, so tragic to talk about that. I mean, the I want to know more just as we wrap this up. I, I, yeah. As we... What, what has it been like for you? I mean, because I, I, we're, we're here spending this whole time. We're talking about him, but like for, for Taj, like... I feel it's clear you have this, you feel a sort of an obligation to defend him because no one's doing it. Right. But I can't even imagine what it's like for the rest of his family, for his children. Uh, it pains my heart to sort of see, have them have to sort of go through the rest of their lives while people just Oprah and everybody just saying, yep, we, sorry, he's, he's, he's out now. Good luck. Can you share a little bit about like, what's that? Cause I feel like people just ignore that about it. And that really is sad. How, how has it been? Are they, are, are you all sort of coping uh, through this? Is this fight back? Is this, is the turn of sort of the tide happening? Tell me, tell me what you think. The turn, the turn of the tide is definitely happening, which is why I'm 
a lot more optimistic. I try not to get angry or mad. I get passionate at times, as you've seen with this interview. Like at certain certain things trigger me, and I'm like I get a little more vocal. Um, but I try and stay level headed and not let my emotions, because I, I just talked about that. I don't try and not let my emotions dictate what I say in that way. I try, I'm trying to be factual and, and truthful in everything that I do, because I know as soon as I slip up with something or retweet something, they'll be on me and they'll say, oh, you know, he's not, he's lying to you. You know, so I have to watch every step that I make in that lane. I didn't want to be the spokesperson for this family. Um, it was something that I just naturally did. I started defending my uncle because I knew Wade, you know, in 2013, uh, when Wade came out of the woodworks, you know, after 2014, 2013, and came out of the woodworks after he didn't get his Circus Soleil thing, I was basically out there, you know, calling him on it. And um, as he kind of went back into the background, I was told to stop, you know, um, being being that aggressive in that way. And I kind of wish that I wouldn't have listened because those kind of people, they never go away. They just get, you know, they find somewhere else to go and get some more support and then attack again. And I think that was the thing with Wade is he just found, you know, another avenue to make that happen. And um, that was the thing with me is just, I don't know, I'm just, I'm going through it because I have a daughter. I don't want her to grow up in a world that is told a lie about who, you know, her great uncle is um, just because of some stupid movie that is scripted in my opinion. And so I said, I'm going to do both. I'm going to fight. I'm going to be there for her as much as I can, but this is important for her as it is important for all the generations of Jacksons. And my whole life has been being close to Michael Jackson and being around Michael Jackson, but with a unique perspective that I've also been molested by someone on my mom's side of the family, my, an uncle on my mom's side of the family. So I have a different perspective than anyone else would have. You know, mine is my brother, Terrell, who also was molested that same night. So we have a different perspective. We're not jaded. We're not over here thinking, you know, so it's hard for me because I have to toe both lines, too. I know how important it is for victims to be believed and heard, but they have to be victims. They can't just be accusers. And I think that's the difference of the two. You, I don't believe in just believing in everyone because, they're, you know, we've ha we have a history in our country of wrongfully accused people, of people being killed for the wrong reasons, you know, whether it's um, Emmett Till or it's the, you know, uh, they, well, the, the reason they called um, a witch hunt is for, because of back in back in those days, or whether it's communism and the, um, the Red Scare in, in terms of where people were pointing the finger at other people, like, oh, you're a com communist and all that stuff, which um, caused Charlie Chaplin to have to leave the country you know, even though he was innocent. So it's like those kind of things happen. So I'm not a big believer in just like, oh, we have to blindly believe anyone. No, it's I want to hear that person's story and I'll make up my own decision if, if I believe them or not, because I know how much they've lied over the 30 years on my uncle. So I don't trust anyone. Well, that's, and that's the thing is I think there's always still a fear of who knows, right? And then it's like I hate, I'd hate to sort of defend and say, oh, well, what if he did these terrible things? What if that happened, right? But then it goes both ways. What if he didn't, right? It's, yeah. it's a really troubling way of we don't really know. And so I can't condemn the man until, like you said, there are facts. Uh, and yeah. when the media has been so clearly putting out lies and – this author of Vanity Fair literally saying these are undeniable facts when they're they're yeah, not they're very disputable under, and and the timing of it when was that released it was released like right I think at leaving the right well even right and we go back to wrap it all up even Oprah who's she's like I believe saying basically saying two faced she's what she's doing is saying oh this is what's happening isn't fair and then suddenly as soon as the tide turns all right now it's time to to to, to do it uh, it's all calculated. And I think Dan Reed in that documentary, he, I, I look, he made a film. He didn't make a documentary, right? And mm. that's where I think what's so frustrating is it's a film that's being treated like a documentary as if it's fact. Uh, and I think well, uh, yeah. the, the, well, the I fact think the, that Wade the, perjured himself, it's, it's, it's just so hard for me to swallow that it's just, it, it angers me. I'm just like, okay, look, I don't want to just completely discredit you and say you're a liar. I, I, I try not to do that. You will, I know. But, but at the same time, like, look, I can't take you fully seriously, but it's like the more and more I look into it, the more you go down the rabbit hole, I, I personally got more and more frustrated that people were just accepting everything as if it was fact. Uh, it's really well, not fair. Yeah. 
Well, the people only read the headlines, and that's the thing. And it's like if the media wants him to be guilty or wants, then that's what it's going to be. I mean, the the hardest thing for me, as I said, I didn't panic when it happened. Was just it was such uh, obvious agenda by the media to do. And I can't tell you, as someone, you know, we we talk about films, and as a filmmaker, how many bridges I burned <laughs> along the way. I was attacking, you know. Uh, Daily Variety, Hollywood Report, all the ones that I'm like, I hope one day I'm on this, you know, I'm, I'm you know, I was just burning, like rotten to me. I was just burning my bridges on it. But at the same time, morality and um, the truth means more to me in that way. And, and it bothered me more that these places, as you, you saw, like things that I respect, things that I, you know, want to aspire to be what it hurts me more when someone I look up to disappoints me than someone I obviously think will disappoint me, disappoints me. And that was the thing with those trade magazines and those trade papers and websites. If it's something that I've read my whole life and looked up to, you know, I wanted to be in one day and then they're over there saying the same propaganda, that hurts more to me. And Oprah, you know, throughout the year, she started taking down the Michael Jackson stuff and which really bothered, especially during, after the James uh, fiasco, you know, where he was caught in a lie of a train station that didn't exist when he said he got molested there. You know, Oprah secretly started taking down things online on Leaving Neverland and Michael Jackson. And I think that's just a cowardly way of doing it. Just say you're wrong or apologize to our family, but don't try and just make it seem like it never existed. Yeah, no, all of the, so guys, look up. You can find a lot of this online. There's a lot of resources. Where can people Where can people go? Where's the best resource? Or is there anything you want to promote here to sort of what's coming up? Where can people go support this cause if they want to learn more? Oh, gosh, there's a, there's a lot. Um, go, watch Square One. That's a great documentary on the 93, 90, you know, 94, the settlement aspect of it in terms of you get to see firsthand kind of like, a lot of um, someone's passion in terms of studying the case and kind of putting it together where it really changes your mind in an aspect of, okay, maybe I didn't know the whole story in that way. And, and I think the MJ Innocent Project, mjinnocent.com, they've been forefront in terms of like defending my uncle and getting the news out there in a way to, you know, don't believe everything you read. And, you know, I... Um, it's what Johnny Depp is going through right now with the whole Johnny Depp, Amber Heard thing. It's like the media painted it one way and they're so reluctant to say, you know, when those tapes came out, they didn't even mention those tapes. Like basically they're so reluctant to, 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 to backtrack in a way. So they just will pretend it doesn't exist. And that's the same thing that happened with James and the train station lie for us. It's like, they'll just pretend it didn't exist or, Oh, we're going to tell another story or we're going to promote something else in the media. Yeah, no, it's true. There's this, you can look up, there's this, 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 he, he lied about the timing of where things happen. And when you actually, people actually went back to do their you know research on it, it proved that James wasn't being truthful at all. Uh, he was, he, and it's the conviction that he said, he, right. you know, he says, he said that lie with the same conviction. He said every other lie, you know? So it's like, you have to question it because he was very specific. He didn't say, you know, and we, you know, and he molested me in the train station. He said he molested me upstairs in the train station. So that is a specific. You right. Know, and for those that are people, he, the train station didn't exist during the period where he's saying this happened, which is, it's not like, oh, I forgot. He, no. he painted a whole memory it of something in a place that exist. couldn't have been, it couldn't have been there. It couldn't have been there. And that's a thing. And that's, that is a very troublesome thing. I think the problem is, is that people get so comfortable in their lives and just elaborate. Like, it's like Wade with the, Oh, I got molested hundreds of times. Well, really? Because in court and whatever, it says that, you know, you were only at Neverland four to five times. So, you know, unless you did 25 time marathons in that way, <laughs> yeah. it's like it's but those are that's common sense. And that's what I always said. Just please, everyone use common sense like. Well, and if, uh, if a real motion. if a real filmmaker was actually doing a real documentary about this, th that kind of stuff would have been cross examined and asked, right? That's where things were problematic. And I, I I've seen Dan Reed in interviews trying to defend himself. It, it seems like he was just trying to have a hit movie, and he's looking for his next one, and he wanted something that was gonna the pop. And and I, I I don't think it's fair to come after a man who's who's dead, who has family and the legacy has, and just attack it like that without at least doing more due diligence. I've seen him trying to argue, well, why didn't you talk to the family, all this stuff? And well, it's not their story. 
but yeah. it kind of is, right? It's everybody's it story. story. Yeah. And that's that's what's and, really dis- disrespectful and disingenuous about him. Of He has motive. He has his own clear motive to do and his own agenda to do what he wants. And that's why I can't take this seriously. And I, and I think as we wrap up, I just this whole idea of Hollywood and so many people, as I started, like, People are just afraid to like Michael Jackson now, and that's so heartbreaking. That shouldn't we should be it's allowed here, at some though, point to Andy, say, you know I, what? I, Let's. I mean, it's it's heartbreaking. It is, but you know, it's mainly here because of the atmosphere and the media. Trust me, the media makes it sound worse than it is in that way. Because if you, I can tell you as someone that observes everything, you know, uh, the Halloween time period was the biggest litmus test for me. The fact that celebrities were dressing up, you know, and playing Thriller in their, you know, and it's like, so for me, if if it was something that they truly believed and endorsed, they would have not done that. I think the thing is, is that they're just scared to come out and say that um, they support Michael Jackson, but they will. It's, they will when it becomes trendy, which is what I've noticed with a lot of Hollywood. It's like, it's all about the trends in, in that way. And so when it becomes trendy, to like Michael Jackson again, they will be there front and center, just like they were in 2009 when he passed, but we're nowhere around in 2005. So it's, it's a pattern in that way. Well, I hope when, I hope we can remember and, and call out the Judd Apatow's and everybody who've been so vocally against him that didn't even know him. Uh, it's, it's frustrating to read. Well, the ones that do that, like the Judds and stuff like that, you gotta, you gotta look at their motives and stuff like that. And they have a lot of people in their corners that are, have, similar scenarios and that it's almost like a deflection screen. And yeah. Judd, Judd Apatow does not go after James Franco as much as he goes after Michael yeah. Jackson. And that, no one wants to say that, but a, it's and, the facts. Well, it's hypocritical. And that's the thing. I, I'm all and about James that Franco consistent? has been caught with underage girl, like very, I, I don't want to condemn him, but it's, you know, it's like, he's then been, I'm, yeah, he's been caught but, doing weird things with, with very young, some of them underage uh, things. So it's like, how can you not, call him out if you're going so vocally against Michael. It's a hypocrisy in Hollywood that I, it's hard to not see it's, anymore. Yeah. It's, and it's, and it's because they want to kill his legacy. And, and that's a thing that it just bothers me. With. See, it's I, not, it's I don't even, Hollywood. I don't even buy that. I don't think it's, I think it's about making themselves feel better. Right. I don't, I don't think they care about the legacy. I don't I think that's secondary. Right. It feels like all of Twitter, all of this toxicity, all of this. You mean like dragging down? Like yeah. It's the, all the just like, you know thing. what? I'm better. Oh yeah. Well, I can kick this person. Well, that that down. has definitely always been. Yeah. I mean, that's been, that's my uncle used to call that the poppy syndrome, which, um, you know, poppy seed syndrome, which is, um, when you grow up to a certain point and then you get to lop it off and enjoy lopping it off. And that's basically what, you know, they were always trying to do to him is grow him up to a certain point and then watch him fall. And I think that's the thing um, that they're trying to do with this legacy is just basically, as you said, and, and I agree with that, it makes them feel better and makes them feel, but that's what that's been reality TV, the whole thing. It's like, it makes people feel better to watch other people crash and crumble in that way. Well, it's and true. So, and, you know, and I'm trying to think of like, there, if there was one person I might argue, you know, is at a level that's getting pretty big. It's like someone like Taylor Swift, right? And Taylor mm-hmm. Swift uh, is the same thing, right? You hit a certain ride of, of level of fandom and they all turn on you. They all want you to, to, then to fail. You're the, villain. You're, the yeah. villain, you're a snake, all that stuff. And her new documentary, mm-hmm. I think is very fascinating because it yeah. does open up eyes of just like, even at the highest level, the Michael Jackson's, the Taylor Swift's, it, you you're allowed to feel depressed. You're allowed to be feel bullied, uh, and I think that's what's really what's sad right now. And, and it's the, a lonely spot too. Yeah. I can tell you that. I mean, seeing her documentary and, and you know knowing my uncle and knowing other people that have hit that you know a, a high plateau, it's a lonely field because there's a lot of people that are around you that only look at you in dollar signs, and you know that you sense it, you know and. The more you work, the more you get isolated in that way. Taj, thank you so much. I think, I hope we've opened some minds here with this interview. And I'm, I'm grateful for your honesty, for not, you're open to everything. That is always a huge uh, sign for me of someone who's being truthful. Uh, as thank someone who, who has, has sadly lied in his past, you, you you can tell, right? You can you squirm, you know, oh, I don't want to be asked that or I don't want to be told that. Uh, it's clear you are you are out, you are open, you, you handle all the topics. And to me, that's another reason why people should really go do their homework on this, open their minds and learn more about this subject. So thank you so much for thank sharing you. these memories about your uncle. I'm a huge fan. I remain a huge fan. My heart goes out <laughs> to your whole family. I hope, I hope this sways at some point where people uh, will finally feel okay to like Michael Jackson. Mm-hmm. I, I finally do. Uh, I wish the Simpsons and Weird Al would come to their senses. I hope they do soon. Uh, but I think in time they will. 
Yeah. Thank you, Andy. And thank you for this opportunity as well. And um, I'm just grateful to have a platform. So thank you. I want to thank Taj Jackson for speaking with us today. And you can follow him over on Twitter to learn more information about what he's got going on. If you like these interviews and you feel like these are important issues, please share and support this channel. It's our goal of this channel to tell stories of people who deserve to be heard. And sometimes due to the subject matter of the interview, YouTube sometimes throttles this channel and doesn't get them out as widely as they should. So please help by sharing these stories on social media and by subscribing to this YouTube channel. Also make sure to hit that notification bell to get all alerts. And if you'd really like to support this channel, you can support the Hugging the Cactus Patreon. If you know any other stories that deserve to be shared, please follow me, Andy Signor, on social media. You can also find us on all places you hear podcasts. And you can learn more anytime at uncancelled.com. Thanks so much for watching.